the whole purpose of our Easter Sunday celebration is to acknowledge that we are witnesses to what God has done for us. And we do that by sharing with others what we ourselves have experienced. We find that same phenomenon in our first lesson, where the disciples begin to speak to the people in Jerusalem, and Peter himself announces that he has witnessed a number of these experiences and is sharing them. In the same way, in our second lesson, Paul is writing to the Corinthians, and he talks about the new life that God has given us. From the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. Then Peter began to speak to them, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. <coughs> they put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, <coughs> that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Here is the first lesson. Please turn to page 272 in the front of the hymnals. And remember when I talk about hymn numbers, I'm talking about the large section of the book with the numbers on the top of the page. If I invite you to turn somewhere in the front of the hymnal, that's up here, the page numbers are printed on the bottom. We're going to read Psalm 118. We'll read the first two verses, and then we'll continue again at Psalm at verse 18. Page 272. Is it 14 through 24? Excuse me? 14 through 24. Okay. You can't get too much scripture. Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and 14 through 24. We'll read it responsibly. I'll read the odd number verses. <coughs> you read the even number verses. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. There was a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Somewhere along the way, you switched with me, didn't you? We started off with me reading the odd verses, and you reading the even, and all of a sudden I look down and realize, this is verse 20, and I'm reading it. <laughs> Why aren't they reading the even number verses with me? 
sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Okay, this isn't Worship 101. This is one of the advanced courses. You really <laughs> got to know what you're doing to figure out what's happening here. We'll continue with our lessons for Easter Sunday. We're hearing from St. Paul in his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, beginning at verse 19. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, and then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom of God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Here ends the second lesson. We rise to the good news of the gospel. The Easter Gospel is recorded in the 24th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning at verse 1. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the woman came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, Suddenly, two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stopping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. 